Imagine if your own immune system, you know, the very thing designed to protect you, could actually be retrained to fight HIV, even when current meds don't quite get rid of it all. Right. What if the key um, lies in the very cells that first spot infections? That's the core idea. So this deep dive is all about dendritic cell immunotherapy in people living with HIV. A really fascinating approach. Our mission today, really, is to unpack how scientists are trying to harness this uh, powerful innate system. Yeah, what the latest trials are telling us the good and the, well, the challenging. And what it all might mean for the future of treating HIV. So get ready, we're going into some pretty groundbreaking science here. It's a big shift in thinking, isn't it? Moving beyond just like suppressing the virus to actively uh, re-educating our own defenses. Definitely. But to really get it, we need to start with the main players, the dendritic cells themselves. Okay, so what exactly are these dendritic cells? Why are they so critical? Well, think of your immune system maybe like a neighborhood, a really organized one. Dendritic cells, okay. they're the uh, the super vigilant neighborhood watch, the ones with sharp eyes. Oh, yeah. They aren't usually the ones doing the direct fighting, but they're the first to spot trouble. Their job is to patrol constantly. Looking for anything suspicious. Exactly. And when they find something like bits of a virus, they collect that evidence. Oh, okay. Then they take that evidence and show it directly to the immune soldiers, your T cells, for example. It's like handing them a wand a poster. Right, saying, this is the guy, go get him. Pretty much. They, they're essentially giving the orders, here's the intruder, this is what it looks like, attack. Without them, um, your immune system is flying blind, like an army with zero intelligence. Oh, wow. Okay, but here's the twist, right? And it's frankly kind of the scary genius of HIV. Yeah. It manipulates this very system. It does. It's incredibly clever, unfortunately. How does it manage that? How does it pull off that deception? Well, what's really insidious is how HIV basically subverts their function. The virus actually latches on to specific receptors on the dendritic cells. There's one called DC Ligian, for instance. Okay. Normally, that receptor helps the cell, you know, read foreign signals, right. but HIV uses it differently. How so? Instead of the dendritic cell sounding the alarm and starting an attack, HIV kind of hijacks them. These crucial gatekeepers get compromised. So he uses them. Yeah, it hitches a ride with the dendritic cells straight into the lymph nodes. Which is exactly where the T cells are waiting. Precisely. The command centers of the immune system. Yeah. So instead of being destroyed, the virus gets delivered right to the T cells it wants to infect. Oh, wow. It turns the body's own intel network into like an unwitting taxi service for the virus. It's a big reason HIV is so hard to completely clear. Okay, that's, yeah, that's quite the challenge. So if HIV is that good at turning things against us, how are scientists trying to flip the script? How do you turn that weakness into a weapon against HIV? It's a strategy that's uh, both pretty ingenious and, well, intricate. It starts by collecting specific cells from a patient, monocytes. Okay, those are a type of white blood cell. Exactly, they're precursors. They can become dendritic cells, so they collect these monocytes. Then, in the lab, scientists use um, specific growth factors, signals, mm -hmm. basically coaxing these monocytes to mature. To transform them into dendritic cells. Right, into fully functional dendritic cells. Once they have this batch of lab-grown dendritic cells, they carefully load them up. Load them with what? With HIV antigens, bits of the virus essentially showing the dendritic cells exactly what HIV looks like, like creating a really detailed wanted poster. Okay, training them. Precisely. Then finally, these newly trained dendritic cells are injected back into the same patient. So it's like we're bypassing the virus's usual trick and hand delivering those wanted posters directly. Yep. Training the T cells and maybe other immune warriors to go after HIV much more effectively. That's the goal, to boost and redirect the natural immune response that HIV normally manages to evade or even shut down. Okay, let's talk results then. What have the clinical trials actually shown us? I know there have been quite a few studies. What stands out? AGS-004, I think, is one people mention a lot. Yeah, you're right. AGS-004 is definitely one of the prominent ones. And the trials, well, they did show it could spark strong HIV-specific T cell responses in patients, which was really important. Proof of concept, basically. Exactly. A critical proof of concept. But, and here's the key limitation, when patients stop their regular HIV meds, their antiretroviral therapy, or RSD, mm. the vaccine didn't fully control the virus on its own, so it's not a standalone cure, unfortunately. Not yet, anyway. Right. And I remember hearing about 
trying to combine these dendritic cell vaccines with other things mm -hmm. like um, drugs to wake up the hidden virus, the shock and kill idea. That's another major line of research. The idea is you use these latency reversing agents to shock the dormant virus out of hiding. And then the newly trained immune system primed by the vaccine can kill it. That's the theory. But so far, the results from those combined approaches have been, well, mixed. Hmm. Why is that so difficult? It just underscores how incredibly complex it is to eliminate a virus that literally stitches its genetic code into our own cells. It hides really well. Okay. But still, even with mixed results there, these trials taken together prove something really crucial. Which is? That dendritic cell immunotherapy is safe and it can undeniably push the immune system in the right direction. It can prime it for action. So even if it's not the whole solution by itself. Right, it provides this critical insight, this foundation that paves the way for more sophisticated combination therapies, things we couldn't really imagine before. It sounds like amazing progress, but clearly, like you said, not the finish line. What are the big hurdles, the obstacles researchers are still really wrestling with? Oh, there are definitely hurdles. A big one is the uh, inconsistency in results you see across different studies. Why the inconsistency? It's largely because different labs might use slightly different methods, different protocols for preparing the cells, for loading them, for, you know, the whole process. Right. Standardization is key. Absolutely. It highlights a real need for standardized methods and better, consistent ways to measure what's happening. And then there's the issue we already touched on the limited viral control. Patients still needed their RT. Yeah. And just practically speaking, this kind of therapy is complex and expensive. It needs highly specialized labs expertise. It's not simple. Which brings up the massive challenge of scaling this, doesn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. how do you possibly implement a personalized lab-heavy treatment for millions of people around the world living with HIV. That is the, yeah, the billion dollar question, isn't it? Delivering something this complex on a global scale is a huge barrier, no almost, question. Almost insurmountable sometimes. But you know, it's worth looking at medical history here. Think about major breakthroughs, bone marrow transplants, even mRNA vaccines more recently. Okay. They all looked incredibly complex, maybe even impossible at the start. Yeah. Super specialized, expensive, hard to scale. Yeah. They started small, they got refined, protocols improved, technology caught up, and eventually they became more scalable scalable, more accessible. So there's hope for that path here, too. There is. But that progression really depends on constantly refining not just the therapies themselves, but also the tools we use to measure their effects, the diagnostics. OK, so that brings us to the future. Where do we go from here? What are the exciting next steps for this kind of immunotherapy? And how important are those diagnostic tools you mentioned? Well, the field is definitely buzzing about ways to make this simpler, more scalable. For instance, there's intense study around mRNA platforms. Like the COVID vaccine. Exactly like that concept. Imagine, instead of taking cells out, training them in a lab, and putting them back, what if an mRNA vaccine could just deliver instructions directly to your dendritic cells right inside your body, telling them how to recognize HIV? Wow, that would be a huge difference. It would be a potential game changer for simplicity and scale. Massive potential there. And what about combining therapies? You mentioned that earlier. It seems like hitting the virus from different angles is often the way to go with HIV. Absolutely. That's probably where the real power lies in the near term. Pairing dendritic cell vaccines with those latency reversing drugs, trying to really perfect that shock and kill, uh -huh. or maybe combining them with broadly neutralizing antibodies. Those antibodies that can target many different strains of HIV. Exactly. Hitting the virus with multiple different weapons simultaneously. And this brings us right back to diagnostics. We need better tests. Better than just viral load. Yes. We need tests that can measure not just T cell responses, but also, say, NK cell activity natural killer cells, another key immune player, mm -hmm. or maybe even deeper, more subtle immune responses. These advanced tests are absolutely essential to actually guide these therapies, to figure out who's responding best, to which combination, and why. So we can tailor the treatment? Precisely. The ultimate vision is precision medicine matching the right immune strategy to the right patient based on detailed, cutting-edge lab testing. It really is powerful, this idea of dendritic cell immunotherapy. It demonstrates just how capable our own immune systems can be if we can just train them properly, guide them accurately. Yeah, it's tapping into something fundamental. And like you said, we're not at the finish line. A cure is still elusive. Hmm. But every trial, every lab test that shows a response, every single patient who participates, Yeah. It feels like it brings us a step closer. Each step matters. 
closer to potentially controlling HIV without needing lifelong medication. It feels like this isn't just, you know, science happening over there to other people. It's a shared journey. I think so, too. Your engagement with this, just understanding these breakthroughs, even the simple vital act of getting an HIV test yourself. Yeah. It's all part of this collective push. A push towards a future where we can really harness our body's incredible power against challenges like HIV. Understanding this complex science and making sure we have the tools to measure if it's working. It just highlights again that informed decisions really start with accurate information. And that foundation for your own health and for the future of medicine, it begins with testing.